Yes. In modes. Now here's the deal. In section 4.1, we took our data and we organized it and made it into lovely tables and into histograms. But lots of people don't really care about that stuff. If you wanted to know about the price of houses in Tempe and somebody gave you a lovely histogram, would you really want to read it? Probably not. Instead, you say, can you give me a number? The kind of number you're going to get is a measure of central tendency. And there are three of them that we look at. One of them is the mean. Now, the mean is the actual balance point for all the numbers. It takes it into account low numbers, it takes into account high numbers, and basically it adds them all together and divides by how many numbers there are. Think of it as your teeter-totter of math. When you were a kid and your older sibling, if you had one, I did, you got on a teeter-totter with them. Do you have teeter-totter nowadays? I haven't yeah. seen one anywhere in a class in a school for a while. But my brother would always do this to me. I'd get on the teeter-totter with him. And he'd sit on his end, and I'd be stuck up in the air. And the way that I balanced myself out was I scooted it out further to move the point closer to me, the middle so that there was some chance I'd get, get back on the ground in a nice way. So that's what your mean is. It's the exact balance point. So it takes into account the big ones. It takes into account the little ones and balances them out exactly. Your median doesn't take into account the weight of the big ones and the little ones. It just says, okay, there's a little one here, there's a big one there, okay, those cancel each other out. There's a little one here, there's a big one there, those cancel each other out. Little one here, big one there, cancel each other out. And the median goes to exactly the middle when your information is in order, numerically. And if your middle happens to be between two things, then you take your two things and you average them. So you add them together and divide by two. You're never going to divide by three because you can only possibly have two things in the middle. Either there's one there or it's in between two and you average those two. The mode does none of those. The mode <coughs> is just the piece that occurs the most. Now it's possible to have two pieces that both occur a lot in the same amount in which case you can have two modes. It's also possible to have all your pieces occur more than once, but in the same amount, in which case you have no mode. The way you determine if you have no mode is if the number of pieces you're counting up to be modes turns out to be more than half your data, or half of the points you have, then you say, okay, there's really no mode. That doesn't really give us any information. And that'll come up, by the way, I believe, in the Barry Bonds problem. Because in Barry, he hits home runs. And it turns out Barry Bonds hits, you know, like two of this, you know, 15, I don't remember what number are. <coughs> what are numbers for? Number, okay, anybody who follows baseball, what's a reasonable high number of home runs to hit the season? 40. Like 40. Okay, so like he hits 42 two different years, and he hits 39 a couple of different years, and he hits 50 a couple of different years. Got really good that year. And he hits, you know, 38 a couple of different years. And by the time we're done counting all the ones that happened two years, two different years, we've covered more than half of his seasons. In that case, we just say there's no mode to this because that doesn't tell us very much. It's just basically reiterating the information. Now, we talked about what central tendency is. I'm going to tell you about summation notation when I get to the formulas. We got mean, medium, mode. Outliers are those things. We talked about this in the last class, remember? Um, Tammany didn't want to be the outlier, so I got to do it. I was the one who was way off the scale on age when we were writing down the ages of the people in the class. Those are the outliers. If you're off the scale on one side or the other, look pretty far out from everybody else. Now these formulas you don't have to have memorized because we really expect that you're going to do most of this on your calculator with a few exceptions. What this symbol is, x with a bar over it means the average of all the x's. And the way you find the average is you do this thing here that says sigma. Sigma means to add all of them together. So 
I add together all the x's, we can also write, read this as sum the x's, and then you divide by how many things you have. And you guys have done this forever, because I know they started like in third, fourth grade, because I know my son does it. And he's now in sixth grade, he's pretty good at it. So you can handle it, but when we get lots of numbers, we don't want to do it by hand, so we can have our calculators to compare that for us. Now this is if you just have individual pieces of data. So for instance, if I was to find the average age of the students in this class, I could just take your age and your age and just start adding them all together and divide by the 38 people in the class. If instead of individual things, I have data that's grouped, like the frequency table that I made, the distribution that I made, then I can say, okay, the average can be found by taking the frequency times the number of people who were 17 and no longer are. And then add that to the frequency times the number of people who were six, uh, the number of people who were six, 18 times 18, the number of people who were 19 times 19, add them all together, and then divide by the 38 people in the class. This will make a little more sense in when I show you one again, because we'll have an example of group data. <coughs> so, we're going to start working with some numbers. Fran Tarkenton, yes, this is an old-time football player, holds the all-time record for, in professional football for throwing touchdown passes. The number of touchdown passes for each of the seasons is given in the table that I'm about to put up. We want to find the mean, the median, and the mode of the number of touchdown passes per year thrown by Fran Tarkenton. By the way, I found that in my last class. Apparently, he couldn't throw a spiral pass, in case anybody wants to know. One of my students thought we all needed to know this, so I think we share. Here is the data. That one's going to work for you. I just gave up. 